Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Um, this is What's Next. Um, for those of you who've been journeying with us, you know that we started off with isolation as a place of preparation. Uh, then we, we did uh, Do Bother Jesus, so now we had What's Next. Um, now we learned again, of course, in isolation, a place of preparation, we learned that even in that place of isolation, that place of, of, of being apart, which can be physical, emotional, spiritual, or it could even just be in this lockdown, uh, we, we know that there God is preparing us for something. He's preparing us, He's setting us apart, and He's building something in us so that when we come out from it, we would have grown, we would have developed. And so we, we also went to Do Bother Jesus where, where we learned that Jesus is actively trying to get us to engage with Him, to, to come and call on Him. And we remember we said even though COVID is, is such a big thing at the moment, even our requests, although they might seem small, that God is saying, Give me that request. Ask me. Ask me and I'll do it for you. So now we, we are here at what's next. And the challenge at what's next is we can go one of a couple ways. One of them being uh, we, we, we can run with, 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 with a crazy zeal that is fleshly driven. That is, I must do this, I must do that, I must do the other. And then before long, it becomes all about what I can do. And I'm not relying on the Lord God anymore. I don't need him anymore because I'm going to run this race with my human endeavor, my human zeal. And then the flip side of that is it's just going back to anonymity. It's just sinking back into the, into the background, doing absolutely nothing and going back to our old ways. And I'm reminded of Jesus saying that we cannot put, uh, we cannot put a new patch on an old garment because the new patch will rip the old apart. We cannot put new wine into old wineskins because the new wine, when it expands, it'll blow, it, it, it'll blow the old wineskin apart. And so even as God has come and He's prepared us, this new life, this new zeal, this new excitement, this new direction He's given us cannot be put back into the old pattern, the old life. God has much more in store for us. He's got much more in store. And even as, even as I was pondering this, I thought about uh, Luke, in Luke's gospel where Jesus is talking about the end of the age. He says, remember Lot's wife. And I remember initially when I first looked at it, I said, oh yes, yes, yes. If I remember Lot's wife, the lesson, if you look back, you'll turn to a pillar of salt. But I looked again at it a bit closer and I said, what is the story of Lot's wife? The story of Lot's wife, the true story is a story of deliverance. Because God himself sent angels into Sodom to deliver them, to extract them out. Just even as his judgment was already upon that place. He, he, stayed, he stayed his hand of judgment simply because one man prayed. And because one man prayed, God sent his deliverance in to rescue that family out. And even, as, and even as God is in the process of rescuing them and all of a sudden his judgment is falling on Sodom and, 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 Lot, and, his, and Lot and his family are moving this way, Lot's wife turns around and in her heart she's thinking about what's left behind. She's thinking about, I wonder, I wonder. And it, it so struck me of, 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 of at times when, when God is delivering us from certain things, He's taking us from, from, from one level to another. He's taking us from, from, from defeat into victory. Oftentimes we look back with a fondness upon that thing that had us in bondage. Sometimes we look back and say, hmm, I miss this, I miss... Hey! <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane, it's absolutely insane. It reminds me of David, David crying over his son Absalom when he hears Absalom is dead. He forgets that just moments, moments earlier, if Absalom saw him, he would have killed him. But, but fortunately, Joab comes to him and says to him, no, 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 wipe your eyes, face the people. Don't, don't come there crying over your son who's dead because he's dead, he meant to kill you. And, and let's not be crying over the things that I've left behind because those things were designed to kill us spiritually. Those things, those, things, those things that were, those little pets, those pet sins, those pet uh, habits, those things were designed to kill us. And, 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 and yeah, we are crying over them. And I believe the Holy Spirit is saying it's time for us to look unto Jesus and follow him. Lot's wife, when she looked back, she forgot. She forgot, this is what she forgot. She forgot that Sodom was a place of, of, of terror a place of torment. She forgot, she forgot all the iniquity that went on there. She forgot that they were thinking of even uh, abusing guests. She forgot that they laughed at her husband. They fo she, she, she forgot how terrible everything was. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. He's bringing us out. He's equipped us. He's preparing us. He's adding to us. Let's not go back to the old. 
Let's move forward, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the great thing about looking unto Jesus is he's always in front of us. When we look to Jesus, he's in front of us. But when, when I'm not looking to Jesus, the temptation is there for me to go in my own direction. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's a perfecter. That's what we do. That's what's next. What's next after being equipped with knowledge? Walk forward. Walk on in the things of God. Do not go back. Do not recede. The temptation is going to be, okay, uh, maybe I'll just go back to being my quiet self. Maybe, maybe that was only during the virus. People were open to the gospel or, 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 or then they were open to prayer. No. God has brought us forward. We must move forward. He's brought us forward. There's ground that has been won, that has been gained, that has been given to us but through Jesus Christ. And now he's bringing us through it. And he's saying, this land that I've given it to you, it's yours. Possess it. We spoke of Shama, one of David's mighty men, who had that lentil patch to defend. And God is calling you and me to defend our lentil patch. That lentil patch might be my workspace, it might be my family, it might be my children, it might be the nation, it might be Cork City, it might be Ireland, it might be Africa, it might be wherever you are. But God is calling you. He brought you into that. And all he wants you to do is defend the patch of land that he's given to you. Go forward. The gains that have been won, defend and go forward. Advance. Advance in the things of God. Let's not go back. Let's not go back. Let's not go back. We hear people talking about when things return to normal. There's no more normal. What we come from, I often say, I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to that rat race. I don't want to go back to that anymore. I thank God for this little, this, this couple weeks, couple, couple weeks or months even of, of isolation where we again, what is important has come to the fore. Where again, Life has slowed down a bit. Where again, family has come back again. Where again, people have gone back into the word and come back into prayer. Again, where worship is rising. Again, where hearts are being drawn unto him. These gains we cannot lose. We must not lose. We must not look back. Behind us was just craziness. God is bringing us into something great. Lord God, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We need your strength. I need your strength. I pray, God, Lord, will you strengthen me? Will you strengthen my brethren, O oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Will you hold us by our hands? And even as we look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith, O oh God, we will be perfected in you. I pray, God, for every one of us who has, who has that lentil patch to defend, who has that area to defend, O oh God, who has that, O oh, oh God, whether it be our families, O oh God, who has, who has that, that commission in front of them. I pray, God, that, Lord, they will reach their targets, they will reach their goals in the name of Jesus. O oh God, I pray, Lord, that it's not going to be a race that is going to be run out of craziness and out of human effort, oh God, but you will supernaturally carry us, oh God, as we say yes to your will, yes to your way. I pray, God, that this will be what's next in our lives, that, Lord, there's a transition, there's a change. Oh God, I pray that the old things would have passed away and all things become new. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. So guys, God bless you. Uh, there's, there's, just, there's just one more of these uh, in this uh, what's next, um, and, and I believe you'll be encouraged. God bless you.